truckers, dairymen, fishermen, nurserymen, salesmen, fieldmen, the list goes on and on, but at the end of the day, we are all hardworking Oregonians. Showing up today means you are against this bill, and you are against legislation that targets rural Oregon. You are against unfair and badly partisan legislation. I know for a fact that we all had way better things to do today. But I know that because you're here, you understand just how important this is. We're here to stand for standing up. The success against this bad legislation would not be possible without the grassroots effort that you all are showing and our 11 senators who walked away from a policy that would cripple rural Oregonians and working families a voice in the cap and trade debate and we truly thank them for their courage and their wherewithal but while today looks like a win we need to always keep fighting for rural Oregonians today we're going to hear from a few folks who have felt or who would have felt the real impacts of House Bill 2020 at 930 House Representatives will also join us I want to know that at 10 o'clock, 10, 15-ish maybe, depending on how the program goes, we need all drivers of equipment for the convoy to go back to the fairgrounds, grab your equipment, because we are going to storm this capital with equipment. I want to ask that we be impactful today and we be respectful, that we leave this area cleaner than when we arrived. Our first speaker today is Marie Bowers. She's a fifth generation grass seed farmer in Lynn and Lane counties. Let's welcome Marie Bowers. Wow, this is awesome. Thanks for being here, everyone. As Brenda said, I'm a fifth generation farmer in Lynn and Lane counties, and my family's been taking care of the land for over 100 years. And I am very proud of that, as I'm sure many of you Oregonians out there can feel the same. I know it's a sacrifice to take the day off work, but we are making a difference. As of right now, we are being told that House Bill 2020, cap and trade, is dead. Personally, until Sine died, it's not dead. And I think you all know that or else you wouldn't be here today. Thank you to everyone who's attended all three rallies. I wish I could have done the last two. Thank you to Timber Unity for keeping this momentum going. Hey, there's going to be a lot of people there. There's going to be a lot of people at about 4.30 a.m. I started getting texts like video, text, live events of the trucks, of the tractors coming from everywhere. We have people that are texting me pictures and videos, and I'm like, I'll take it. I'll take it. Come to Salem. And I think about it, and somebody said to me, I don't know if Salem was built for this. <laughs> I guess we're finding out. So I'm a representative from the Albany area, but today, today is what I'd rather wear any day of the week. Because growing up in a truck shop, growing up on the farm, my favorite title is Daughter of a Trucker. And one of, I have a couple of sayings and one's right on that truck. If you bought it, a truck brought it. For you guys to show up, and we talk about the rural urban divide, but I also want to say the stuff that's happening in this building, building it's harmful for all Oregonians. Whether you live in Vernonia, or Klamath Falls, or Gresham, this, is, this stuff that we're passing is bad for every Oregonian. And so when people are listening, they're listening on the news or Facebook Live, everybody needs to pay attention. Whether you're wearing boots or whether you're wearing heels, you need to stand up and pay attention to what's going on in Salem because we need to continue to make Oregon affordable so that we can continue to live here. Yeah. 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 Rhett Brock Smith mentioned the gold statue up there, the pioneer carrying an axe. 
On the house floor, the carpet is made as pictures of the Douglas fir tree. Everywhere you go inside that building is a reminder of how this state was built. And I never forget that every single day. You guys showing up puts a face onto what we fight for every single day. So I can't thank you enough for being here. You guys are making my job easier because you guys are standing up and saying it's time. Do not make this state unaffordable. This state is not for the wealthy elite. This state is for everybody in every town across the world. You know, I personally would love to have a beer in some saloon, in some small town, with any of y'all. Thank you guys. Our next speaker is a farmer from Sisters. He raises hay, cattle, and industrial hemp. Can you join me and welcome me, Matt Cyrus. Say, I'm not sure how to follow up with uh, what we just did, but uh, wow, it's, all I can say is, it's incredible to see so many people out here. I certainly, as she said, my name is Matt Cyrus. I'm president of the Deschutes County Farm Bureau as well as the uh, Oregon Family Farm Association. And we'd like to express our appreciation to Tim Rigidity and those folks for putting this stuff together. And everybody that shows up today, it shows what happens when you wake up rural Oregon and what we can do. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing the turnout. Um, all the equipment, the tractors. I've got a little boy in a dozer I thought about bringing today, but I wasn't sure where I was going to park it. But uh, it's absolutely amazing. And if we can keep this momentum going, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's the fact that it's House Bill 2020. 2020 is the year that we can take back this state. If in the last several elections there were enough undervotes in rural Oregon to have changed the face of this state, changed our governor, changed a lot of our representatives and senators, if rural Oregon just gets out and votes, we can make a difference. And so I would ask that everybody here keep the momentum going. Get involved, let's recruit good candidates, let's get them elected, and let's turn this state around. Thank you. Thank you everyone, my name is Tiffany Harper Monroe, and I'd like to thank our previous speakers for talking about the negative implications of this bill and poor legislation. But I'm going to conclude with just how important you are and how important the value systems are that we stand upon. From the book of Genesis, God created humans in the his image and call them to take care of all that he created. Now whether you are a person of faith or perhaps lack thereof, there is an undeniable obligation and noble calling of humanity to protect and preserve beautiful landscapes and promote economic viability for our communities that is supported by the foundation of land and natural resources stewardship. As I look around the capital steps, I see fathers, mothers, sisters, and mothers who have dedicated their lives, and perhaps generations of lives, to the most noble of causes, to steward our natural world through farming, ranching, and forestry. I too have dedicated my life to these efforts. I come from two farming families. My mother's family, family farms in Kenya, Africa, and my father's family in Junction City also farms, which I am a part of, fifth generation and fourth generation woodland manager. My husband, who is working right now because it's not raining in Junction City, and I are expecting a baby boy, the sixth generation of our family farm. As a third generation farm bureau member and current Lane County Farm Bureau president, I applaud your grassroots efforts to create a voice 
in demand of a well-deserved representation in our state. As naturally introverted, humble, and hardworking people, telling our story does not come naturally. But now more than ever, we must magnify our voices and support each other and sing our praises as we share our contributions to this natural world. My family farm was established in Lane County in 1893. And with each new generation, those before have passed down these values of stewardship and love of the land that I too will pass down to my child. With the advancement of knowledge and land management techniques, we continue to evolve and adjust our management practices to sustain small family business, provide jobs in our community, and decrease our ecological footprint on the planet. We happily comply with hundreds of state and federal regulations, regulations which you all know very well, receive certifications, practice soil, water, and natural resources, conservation, and that is just the beginning. As land managers, we are observant of patterns in our fields. Our chemists, mechanics, meteorologists, and scientists, and we all rely on sound research from industry and land grant institutions like Oregon State University to ensure that Oregon remains sustainable and economically viable. My grandfather said, our legacy and way of life is not done for ourselves. We must manage the land and the planet for the future, even though we will never see the benefits. This is our legacy and way of life on Harper Farms. And I know that despite what our neighbors and some of our legislators might say, these selfless values hold true for each and every one of you. Today, I ask that we remain kind and steadfast in our efforts to tell our short story and share our contributions to the natural world with our communities and legislators. Please continue to organize, make history, and work together so that farming, ranching, and forestry has a bright future in Oregon. Thank you.